As it was just said, we are Maria, Maria Press, from uh, the National Archives in, uh, in Sweden, the department in Östersund, which is in the northern part of Sweden. And I'm Bente Jensen, I'm an archivist in Denmark at the City Archives in Olbo, which is also in the northern part of the country. It's an honor to be here, as archives in the Nordic countries have for the last many years been very inspired by the way archives in the UK work with outreach, learning, and engagement. In addition, we are very happy to be here in Manchester to present the status and the pre preliminary findings of the project, as you see here, turning access into learning from the view of the archives. We call it TEL, so when I refer to the project in the paper, I'll say TEL. Yes, TEL is a Nordic project as it is founded by the Nordic Plus program for grown-up people. It is a part of the Nordic Council, Council programs, which is the official Nordic co-parliamentary body. Um, so let's see, that yeah, works. The project coordinator is the Nordic Center of Heritage Learning and Creativity, NCK. NCK is a Baltic Nordic research center, which is owned by the museums and archives in the Nordic Baltic area. Focus of the research of the center has for the last 10 years uh, been learning through, not about heritage and lifelong learning, which is also the scope of the TAL project. On the NCK, NCK website, we put the link over here, you can find reports and findings in the field, and even in English for those of you who are not fam familiar with the Scandinavian languages. The participant in the TAL are four archives, one with a local scope, my archive, the Olber City archives, one with a regional scope, Maria's archives uh, in Östersund, a part of the national archives, and then two national archives, the national archives in Estonia and in Iceland. Norway is present um, in the sense that we investigate examples from the Norwegian archives, and you'll see that later. The aim of TAL is to develop a framework for how producers of online archival resources could release the implicit learning potential in digitally accessible archival resources. In the paper, we will discuss the general presumption that digitization automatically means better and more democrat democratized access to the archives. Um, and we will base it on empirical studies of the digital access to the archives in the Nordic Baltic uh, countries. The project attempts to develop, develop a framework for reflecting on and accessing learning through digital archival resources. The aim is also to deepen the understanding of the challenges and potentials of learning that lies in the use of digital archival resources, to release the implicit learning potential or at least inspire the archives to reflect on the possibility in the future. Focus is on adult and lifelong learning. And we have three years to do that, and uh, we started in 2015, so we are in the middle of the process. The background, a bit about that. Archives in the Nordic area work hard to become accessible online. They create virtual collections, exhibitions, catalogues, services, and digital spaces for discovery and sometimes for learning. However, archives have, have, has for year, have for years lagged behind many other organizations when it comes to develop elegant and user-friendly resources. That is partly because archive collections are huge and primary uh, sources are complicated to use. In addition, the target group for archives in the Nordic area has traditionally been scholars and not the general public. For several archives, publishing online are now viewed as a way of catching up with the lack of po public focus. Online publishing is regarded as democratization of the archive holdings as they now are in principle accessible to everyone. However, the initiatives behind these platforms um, have, are often driven by the techno technological possibilities and quantitative aims 
rather than the society needs, what society needs, or the wish to engage new user groups and to maintain the traditional users. As the researchers Tyler and Gibson have remarked in 2016, the creators of digital platforms often overlook the ways they might realize aims that support, support learning and engagement with cultural heritage. Instead, they simply broadcast the collections to the public. We'll have to analyze the purpose of the sites and differ between access, outreach and communication. The background for this distinction is a 15-year-old ongoing discussion in the Nordic countries, in the, yeah, in the archives, which started with the assumption around 2000 that when archives gave access to the holding online, they reached, reached out and the users, users would find the material on their own. In Denmark, the trend is called the database disease. The conclusion and the point of departure of TAL is that focusing on passive access represents an old business model, as the American archivist blogger, Kate Feimer, uh, call it, where the archives collect, offer access, but, but do not take uh, the, the re responsibility to promote the archives through outreach and engagement of the users. Until we have added the perspective of lifelong learning. Already in 2002, the EU Commission wrote the digital, the digital Report, where the potential for learning by using digital archives was highlighted. The report concluded that, quote, the education should become the focus of every digitization policy and a central point in every cultural heritage policy. For example, when selecting material for digitization and producing new cultural heritage resources, memory institutions should follow a multi-purpose approach foc focusing on ed education. This kind of education pool should always be a part of the strategy. End of quote. However, very few archives in the Nordic area seem to have listened to this report. It is a fact that uh, Nordic Baltic archives in many ways do support lifelong learning in practice in real life, even if they do not intend to do so. The archives users are largely grown up people doing family research and local history studies, and we all know that. By undertaking these activities, the users develop many different skills on their own, and we saw that in the paper before. In addition, archivists support them in their research daily in the reading rooms, give courses, talks. Some archives have staff dedicated for learning, archives learning officers. But in the Nordic area, they usually focus on school pupils and not on long life, lifelong learning and grown-ups. TEL wants to deliver a system for qualifying learning through digital archival resources. In what, by what exact form we will present that is something we need to discuss further. The purpose is to help and advise colleagues in the sector to produce better products and make the archives aware of their potential as learning institutions, and by that improve positions in relation to financial bodies, stakeholders, and to reach out to new users. In the project, different types of online archive resources are categorized and the kind of learning potentials that lies within them are analyzed. In this project, we are not going to measure statistics in use or behavior. We are not aiming to understand the needs of the audience, and we are not going to make design analyses. In the first place, we want to analyze what kind of learning and personal development the archive tools actually could offer to the grown-ups. We'll map the uh, digital archival resources in Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and Estonia, and analyze them according to the aim of the project. First of all, we have to categorize the sites in catalogs, digital reading rooms, online exhibitions, archival sites for schools, cooperative platforms, open data platforms, etc. The next step will be to reflect upon what kind of learning is involved in the types of digital resources, respectively. This will, of course, differ depending on what kind of digital resource we are talking about. Later in the project, we will perform tests with long life learners to see how they react to the websites in relation to our questions, which will 
we will mention in a minute. So the structure of the project will be defining the research questions, mapping and analyzing the sites, and that's what we are in the middle of doing now, make user evalu evaluation of the sites, and then at last, recommendation and, and see the implication in future sites and archives. The focus of TAL is mention as mentioned on adult and lifelong learning. And we use a broad definition of learning that includes development of skills, knowledge, understanding, values, ideas, feeling. And we are a bit inspired by the campaign and learning in British Museum and Galleries, which is mentioned in Tanner from 2015. This is from 2002. We will analyze the website by asking questions like, what kind of skills are needed to use the platform? What kind of skills does the platform develop? What does the uh, platform inspire to? Does it allow people to be creative and uh, interactive? Why and why not? We're also inspired by an interesting report from 2000 that discussed the pedagogical nature of ITC. The report of Sharples has concluded that learning with ITC is much closer to informal learning than to formal traditional school learning. And we found this statement very interesting. The model implicates that there should be dynamics in digital archival sites still to be uncovered, systemized, and used. So lifelong learning is associated with these uh, terms that you see here, individualized, learner-centrated, situated, collaborative, lifelong, as new technologies, personal, user-centered, mobile, network, and durable. And I leave one word out because I simply can't pronounce it. <laughs> so I had to learn. <laughs> well, so the similarity seems obvious uh, in this scheme. And uh, now I'll give the word to Maria, who's going to uh, give an example on how you could uh, analyze a site. So we'll go on to Norway now. Yes, we have started to map and analyze some sites in the Nordic and Baltic area countries. And I'm now going to show you one example of how we are thinking to do this analyze. And we go to Norway. And uh, in Norway, we can identify a big extent of user participation and involvement when planning, building and running heritage and archive sites. Organizations and institutions often cooperate and construct sites together and are using crowdsourcing methods. The sites are always free to use, there's no charge. And the philosophy behind it is to get as much heritage data as possible out to the general public. And the Norwegians claims, let's do it together. One example that illustrates this trend is the digital reading room for the National Archives in Norway and the Regional State Archives. It's called Digital Arkivet. It contains scanned records, as for example church registers and databases with transcribed sources. Special about this site is that it also invites the crowd to publish sources that, you, that they have transcribed, such also as church registers, prison rolls, etc. When you search the website, you can't tell which material is published by the official national archives and what is done by volunteers. This, of course, creates engagement and the feeling of ownership. And the Digital Archivet is one of Norway's most visited websites. It started as a website for researchers, but soon developed into a site merely for genealogists. It also contains several chat forums where people can help each other to find persons in the digitized sources, or they can discuss other questions related to the research or on the site. But when it comes to the user interface, it's still a very traditional site. The structure is complicated and difficult to understand. You have to know a lot about history of administration and be able to identify exactly which source you are looking for in order to use it. So we will ask uh, the questions that Bent uh, mentioned before to this, this site. What kind of skills does a platform develop? Well, as we see it, if the user don't give up, 
the platform can help to develop numerous skills, but the user will have to develop them on their own. The site does not offer much help. Users with strong inner motivation or with help from a teacher or rather an archivist will be able to develop skills like history of administration and geography, source criticism, their patients will be trained, they will learn how to learn, they can raise curiosity, they can get the possibility of helping others and of course they learn a lot of computer skills and more. And what does the platform inspire to? Well, it doesn't really inspire in the first place. It scares the user away with its complicated structure and content and lack of good tutorials. However, if you belong to the group of people with a strong inner motivation, you can get inspired to do research in the fields of history, family history and perhaps other kind of research. Active users can get hooked in the social life, in the chat forums and in groups that transcribe and publish sources. Does this site allow people to be creative? Yes, people can upload their own sources and transcription of sources here and photos. They can add photos of their farm to, to the censuses. However, your research has to be stored other places than on the site and no other creativity is possible on the site. Well, this was an example. In the last phase of our research project, we will do user testing and we will invite different kinds of people that are lifelong learners and ask the same questions as we did now. Throughout the times, a few archives in the Nordic area have done many outreach and school activities in real life, in classrooms and in the archives. And how can we transform the methods we developed in this work in order to improve the learning potential in online archival resources. One part of the job of the archive learning officers is to guide people into the world of archives and offer them tools they need to be able to explore and use the archives by themselves. For example, we have found four big groups of things that they do. They try to wake the interest, they stimulate the learning process, they offer possibilities for participation in useful work and so social interaction, and they stimulate own production. In the TAL project, we would like to raise the questions how those in real life experiences can be elements in online products. Can they, for example, be implied in sites for open data, for online catalogs, etc.? We try to find out which of the learning and engagement officers' methods that are in play in the digital platforms, where, whether they have been used intentionally or not. We have listed them in a table and uh, already with just a few cases, we can draw the conclusion that very few archives listen and try to find out what people want or are looking for. In addition, just a few sites catch people without a clear question. In addition, very few seem to trigger the detective in you, even if that is the strength in research methodology. No. So, uh, in this slide that you see now, we have compared several, uh, well, on this page, only three sites. Uh, it's the, the first one is the digital archive that I talked about, and you can see that they get a lot of scores in the end of this sheet. And that is uh, possibilities for participation and social in interaction and also stimulates own production. Then besides that you have the Svar, it's the Swedish national uh, catalog or digital reading room and they get no scores at all actually. Uh, uh, and that is uh, uh, because it's made for the traditional scholar. And, and it, it even says on the page that if you need help, you can buy a tutorial in our webshop. <laughs> so, and the digital archives has, uh, oh, the Stockholm Challen has a lot of scores. It's, it's a site made for schools and it has a lot of scores in the beginning of this sheet when it comes to wake interest and stimulate the learning process. Well, uh, this slide illustrates the status of the project. There are many pedagogical methods in the literature about formal learning and informal learning. These methods are developed by the learning and engagement staff in the archives and we are testing them on archival digital resources. 
However, digital learning and communication is also a field with a huge literature. The project has not dealt with this field yet, but we will apply theories to the resources in the next phase of the project. And in the end, to the end, this slide shows what to do next. We will now enter phase two and start with user evaluation. And we will, we will do some interviews, screen mapping, observation, and so on. And in phase three, we plan to formulate recommendations for the future for people that want to establish archival digital resources. We hope this will be useful for them. And thank you for having us here. And we will very much have your contact with you. So please mail us. Thank you. <laughs>